Hello and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. I'm Kelly Quinn with Paint for the Wild and I am excited to share with you our latest drawing of this lovely little orca that you see right here. We're going to share with you all of the tips, tricks, and materials that you will need in order to create this awesome little orca. Starting with some simple shapes and then getting into more realistic contrast details using lighting um, at the very end with a few other pencils to shade in to get some more emphasis and contrast. The great thing about this painting is that we can do it all completely with a number two pencil. And a number two pencil can be a both mechanical and a normal wooden pencil with lead inside it. Um, most common pencils that you buy in a pack are already number two pencils, so you don't need to overthink that part of it. So you just need a pencil, an eraser, preferably a pencil with an eraser, unless you have your own separate eraser, and then a piece of paper. And that's all you will need to do this entire lesson. There'll be a part two to this class as well. In part two, you'll actually go over how to do the shading and creating lighting and impact with uh, just a few other graphite pencils. So if you're going to do that part and that lesson, you can still use your number two pencil, but if you have another variety of pencils like a uh, 2B, a 6B, those kind of things, I will go over all those materials in that video. Um, and I will show you how to handle them and use them as well as a couple other fun little techniques and materials. If you have your pencil and your paper, then let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna go ahead and take off our example here, which I will have references below in the description so you can see a larger image of this picture. The very first thing you're going to do with your number two pencil is create a kind of like a little hill. Keep it in the middle. You don't wanna make it too big. If you make it too big, all of the extra like fins and pectoral fins and the caudal fin may not fit on your paper. So keep it sketch a little bit smaller rather than bigger. And then as you're starting to do this, as soon as you get your nice little curve in and you definitely want it to curve a bit more at the end, you're going to put in an egg, a little oval egg right here, not too ridiculously big. So you know what this is? It's going to actually end up being the melon of our orca. And that's actually what it's called. Their head where their like, uh, where their blowhole is, is actually called the melon. And then at the end of that, you're going to put a little teeny tiny circle, just like that. Next, you're gonna add in a bigger oval. This is gonna obviously be where the pectoral fins are, where the belly starts, and it will help, get us, um, help us get that curve on our orca. As soon as you have that in, you just go ahead and connect those two circles with a nice soft line. And then keep in mind when you're drawing, try to draw with a lighter hand. So I keep it very loose kind of between my fingers. Um, and it helps me from being so intense and heavy with my hand. So go ahead and then also connect from the very bottom of this little circle back here, over here. So you're gonna make a bigger oval. Excuse that skinny line right there. So from these two ovals, you're gonna make an even larger oval, getting the main form of the body. Following that, you're going to keep your midline as your guide and continue this curve all the way around. Except as you get towards where the tail is, you're going to want to taper it off into this kind of a, like a little, um, like a finger coming down to like a point, like a soft finger. Or it kind of looks, honestly, it kind of looks like a zucchini squash at this point. So if you have a good squash, then you are following along perfectly. All right, so now that we have this in, let's go ahead and make sure that our curve is nice right here, because we definitely want the back to be pumping up a little bit more because it's where the big old pectoral, I mean, the dorsal fin, not pectoral fin, uh, pectoral fin. The dorsal fin is going to go. So go ahead and put a vertical line about midway in the middle of your shape. And then use that to figure out where to put your dorsal fin and create that height. Now they have very intense dorsal fins um, and it's actually the males of this species of orcas all have this very tall, distinct fin, um, the dorsal fin, whereas females, if you want to create a female orca, have these more curved fins, much smaller and curved like that. 
But for the rest of this painting, we're going to be sticking with the male's dorsal fin and sticking with our original drawing, but feel free to take it as you like. I'm here just to show you the techniques and the materials, and I'm just here to guide you, and it's your piece, so make it your own, please. So I'll just keep on here and I put the little blowhole in, and it's literally just a sideways V. We're gonna go ahead and finish out the head to kind of define this little upper lip right here. And it goes all the way down the bottom, right here at the bottom of the circle. And then you curve up, making like a smiley, and you curve back down. It's like that, kind of like another finger. So you put your finger there, sort of like the marking, it's both the marking of the underbelly under the chin and the mouth, which we will define in a moment. Now at about, yeah, not too far away from the nose, but you don't want to be too far back either. Kind of keep it around this area where your blowhole ends up being. Put another circle at about the same size as the nose. This is going to be the upper eyelid and the lower eyelid, like eyebrow area. And then within this, you put a little egg, and that's going to be the eye. So they have a pretty small eye compared to their body, so just know that this big circle is not the eye. If you wanna make them uh, have that big eye, then feel free, it is your painting. I'm just here again to guide you along the way. So we're gonna go ahead and put in that very distinct pattern and marking. And it's just, again, another egg. Like I say, simple shapes, guys, is all you need. And it goes right behind the eye. So this pattern actually doesn't go in the eye or cover the eye, it just sits right behind it and just a little above this more um, bottom jaw uh, marking. Now with this done, you're gonna go ahead and put in the first pectoral fin, which is those big old gorgeous fins in the front. So keep in mind that they're really big paddles, they're big animals, so they need some big propellers some big, well, controllers, since the pectoral fins actually help control their body. So make sure they're pretty big. And you want to, again, you can do it as a big oval, but know that they kind of have a little dip back here, so it's kind of like a lumpy avocado. So make sure to put that little bit of lump in your avocado. <laughs> and then go ahead and put a little tiny circle back there, partially circle, because that's going to be the back pectoral fin that's hidden. I'm gonna go ahead and erase some of these lines while we're in here, just so you can see the size of the fin. I'm also gonna go ahead and start erasing some of these other extra lines in the body so we can clean it up. I'd say keep that main line, that middle line we were using as a guide earlier on, going down the belly, we're gonna use that again. Again, just cleaning up. <laughs> Excellent. You go ahead, go back in and just refine those lines just a tad bit more. And you have yourself very good beginnings of an orca. But of course, we are not done. We need to get that awesome tail in. So the caudal fin is in the back. Right back here, and you can think of it as a very sharp banana. <laughs> so, most of it's gonna be hidden behind the tail, but you still wanna have this little bit that pokes out over here. And this part, we're going to create a little bit of a curved effect to it, which really gives them a lot of depth. So go ahead and erase the one that's covering up the, the uh, tail, since the tail is obviously in front, so it's not gonna be covered up by the back tail. I mean, by the back like, fluke. And then this guy is going to curve. So think of it like a little dog ear right there. Curves over, coming, pointing back towards our orca. Just like that. All 
All right, so now with that in, we just have to put in their last two little patterns here. This one kind of looks like a, um, oh my goodness, what's the boomerang? That's what I was looking for. It's kind of like a boomerang right here. It goes just behind the dorsal fin. So it's a boomerang. And then below the boomerang, starting from under the belly, following the curve, like see if that was his belly coming up to meet this muscle, curves up to that midline, and then curves back down, just like that. These two do not touch though, so make sure to keep that space in between those two patterns. So before we're done drawing our orca, we're gonna go back in and put our eye in. And so, I'm gonna, and we're also gonna go in and refine a little bit around the mouth, kind of define a few other places, add in a little extra something, something in the background with some cool landscape. You can take it your own way as well. Um, and then we'll be ending this video and then I will have another video that will show all the filling in of the contrast that's created through shading. Now with your sharpest pencil, you're gonna wanna go in and first you're gonna create a little tiny white dot over here. That's going to be the speck in the eye that gives him a lot of light and really brings your drawing to life. And then you're gonna fill in the pupil, which is just a little bit. Pupil takes up the majority of the eye, but leave that little white spot right there, that little tiny gleam, because that's really what brings the life to your drawing. Um, and you can play with that, obviously, as much as you like. You can softly do it. You can put it on this side if you want to have the orca kind of looking this way, whereas with the light source on this right side of the eyeball, the pupil, he's kind of looking this way or this way, coming towards me. So you can play with that a couple times if you'd like. So we're gonna go ahead and then just define the upper, like the eyebrow and the lower air, eye area a bit more. Get in the little smiley, his little, where his little mouth is. Ooh, didn't do that right. <laughs> it's like that, very subtle. I'm actually gonna go back in and kind of clean up just around here a little bit. I want a, a tiny bit of white to be coming up under the jaw. Add a couple little wrinkles where the uh, pectoral fins meet the side of the body. Fine again. Fining. Awesome. All right, your orca is almost done. Just redefine that middle line just a little bit there. That's actually the muscles in the body. And we're gonna use that definitely later on whenever we're going to be filling in and shading. So the only thing is you just take away this upper one and make sure it kind of swoops down to go towards this eye patch area. Now, the last thing you're gonna do is going to be the landscape around him. So I'm gonna show you that by zooming out. Now this part is just supposed to be purely fun. You do not have to do this if you don't want to, but just if you wanna start adding in your animal into an environment, but not having to necessarily create the entire piece, it's just kind of giving you like a snippet of a landscape. It's very, very easy to do with marine animals because you can just include that lovely swoopy water up here. So you see how I did that? I just literally took some very soft squiggly lines, kind of let them layer over top of each other. And I'm just thinking of a uh, very calm, relatively calm sea, maybe one in Vancouver where the Southern resident orcas live. But if you wanna add in like an iceberg like you could put an iceberg back here, have some below, have some above. Um, you could put some like ice patches over here. You could put some mountains or some of the forest in Vancouver. But just to keep it simple, we're going to just put our sun over here and we're gonna put the sun not necessarily completely over the dorsal fin, just almost there. So it's going to be a half circle for our sun right there. You're gonna define that water a little bit more and know that you come in and you erase the ones that are up higher because you only want one little sliver 
making its way across the dorsal fin to give the illusion of um, depth and being within the actual drawing and the water source. Even gonna add one more wave back there. I'm gonna erase a couple of these back here too. And you can either complete it or you can just kind of let them flow off into the distance and it's all good. I just thought I actually want mine to be a little bit more curved. Just like so. And just like that, you now have your finished drawing. If you wanted to add in a couple other things, like I said, please feel free to go for it. I would love to see it. If you wanna share your work with us, please use the hashtag of the wild. And also please use our at, at paint for the wild. And also share it with me at Kelly of the wild, K-E-L-L-Y of the wild and you'll have the chance to be featured on our Instagram and Facebook stories. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really hope you enjoyed learning how to draw this lovely little orca. If you would like to ask any questions, please ask them in the comments below or send us an email at info at paintforthewild.com and we'll help get back to you as soon as we can. So if you wanna see how to actually shade in this orca, we have another video right after this one that will show you, let me grab it, how to add more graphite uh, shading and lighting in to create more emphasis in your work. So if you're, but if you're happy with this, this is a great starting point. You can even color it in, or you can sketch it a few more times, try some different backgrounds. Like I said, you can do an iceberg in the back. Um, you can do some like a mountainous background, like it's in Vancouver. You don't have to do a sun. You can add fish. We would love to see your creativity and what you decide to make. If you enjoyed this class, please give us a follow at Pay for the Wild. Mm -mm. If you liked our class, please give us a follow at Paint for the Wild on both Instagram, Facebook, and please subscribe to us here on YouTube. Um, you can also follow me at Kelly of the Wild, K-E-L-L-Y of the Wild, for more artwork and time lapses and videos also like this. If you have any questions about your work or anything in particular about the techniques or the materials that we were showing today, please comment below and let us know your thoughts. If you have any suggestions for new artwork, we would love to hear those too. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you enjoyed it and I can't wait to draw with you or paint with you again soon.